Welcome to our channel, where we delve into the mysteries of the human psyche. Today we embark on a journey into the fascinating world of scaling techniques in psychology. Imagine the challenge of quantifying something as elusive as an attitude, a preference, or even a perception. These methods provide us with the tools to measure subjective psychological constructs, bridging the gap between the qualitative and quantitative realms of human experience. Join us as we explore the fascinating world of scaling techniques, from Likert scales to Q sorts and discover how these powerful tools can help us unlock the secrets of the human mind. Our first foray into the world of scaling techniques brings us to the method of interval scaling. Imagine a ruler with its evenly spaced markings representing units of measurement. Interval scales operate on a similar principle providing a measurement scale with ordered values and equal intervals. This means that the difference between any two adjacent points on the scale is equal, allowing us to make meaningful comparisons. Think of the Celsius temperature scale, a prime example of an interval scale. However, unlike ratio scales, interval scales lack a true zero point. In psychology, one of the most widely used interval scales is the Likert scale. You've likely encountered Likert scales before. Those questionnaires that ask you to rate your level of agreement with a statement on a scale ranging from strongly disagree to strongly agree. While Likert scales may not have a true zero point, they provide valuable insights into the relative strength and direction of people's attitudes and beliefs. Our exploration of scaling techniques now leads us to the method of summative ratings, a powerful tool in psychological research. Imagine trying to measure something as multifaceted as anxiety, which can manifest in numerous ways. Anxiety isn't a singular entity but rather a constellation of thoughts, feelings, and physical sensations, each contributing to the overall experience. The method of summative ratings provides an elegant solution by breaking down a complex construct into smaller, more manageable components, making it easier to analyze. Researchers create a series of items or questions, each designed to tap into a specific aspect of the construct being measured, ensuring comprehensive coverage. For instance, a questionnaire measuring anxiety might include items like I worry a lot or I feel nervous in social situations, capturing different dimensions of anxiety. Participants respond to each item based on their own experiences, typically using a rating scale, which allows for nuanced responses. These individual item scores are then added together to create a total score, representing the individual's overall level of the characteristic or behavior being measured, providing a clear picture. The method of summative ratings allows researchers to capture the intricate tapestry of human characteristics and behaviors, providing a holistic understanding of the individual and enabling more effective interventions. Our journey through the realm of scaling techniques now brings us to the intriguing method of paired comparisons. This method is a fascinating tool used in various fields, from market research to psychology, to understand how people make choices. Life is replete with choices, often forcing us to make difficult decisions between two or more options. Whether it's choosing a product in a store or making a significant life decision, the process can be complex and nuanced. The method of paired comparisons provides a glimpse into the intricate workings of human decision-making by presenting individuals with pairs of items and asking them to choose their preferred option from each pair. This method simplifies the decision-making process by breaking it down into manageable comparisons. Imagine you're a market researcher tasked with determining consumer preferences for two popular brands of cola. Let's call them brand A and brand B. Your goal is to understand which brand is more favored by consumers and why. Using the method of paired comparisons, you would present participants with brand A and brand B and ask them to indicate which cola they prefer. This direct comparison helps to eliminate biases that might arise from other factors. By systematically comparing each brand to every other brand in the study, you can create a hierarchy of preferences. This hierarchy provides a clear picture of consumer choices and helps in making informed decisions. One of the advantages of the paired comparison method is that it allows for direct comparisons between two items, reducing the effects of extraneous variables that may affect preferences. This method is particularly useful in scenarios where subtle differences between options need to be highlighted. The method of paired comparisons provides valuable insights into consumer preferences, aiding in product development, marketing strategies, and even our understanding of human decision-making processes. 
By leveraging this method, businesses can better cater to their customers' needs and preferences, ultimately leading to more successful products and services. Our exploration of scaling techniques continues with the method of successive categories. Imagine trying to measure something as subjective and multifaceted as stress. Stress isn't a one-size-fits-all experience, it manifests differently in each of us, ranging from mild tension to debilitating overwhelm. The method of successive categories provides a solution by presenting individuals with a set of ordered categories, each representing a different level of the characteristic being measured. Participants are then asked to choose the category that best represents their current state or experience. For instance, a researcher measuring stress might use categories such as not at all stressed, mildly stressed, moderately stressed, very stressed, and extremely stressed. Each category represents a progressively higher level of stress, allowing individuals to pinpoint their current position on the continuum of stress. Researchers must carefully consider the potential for unequal intervals when using the method of successive categories and interpret their findings accordingly. Our exploration of scaling techniques now leads us to the realm of ranking methods. From our favorite foods to our most cherished values, we constantly create internal hierarchies, ranking items and experiences based on their relative importance to us. Ranking methods provide a window into these internal hierarchies, allowing researchers to tap into the subjective preferences that shape our choices and behaviors. Imagine you're a researcher interested in understanding people's preferences for different types of fruit. Using a ranking method, you could present participants with a list of fruits – apples, bananas, oranges, strawberries, blueberries – and ask them to rank these fruits in order of preference. By analyzing the rankings provided by multiple participants, you can gain insights into the relative popularity of different fruits and identify any patterns or trends in fruit preferences. When used judiciously, ranking methods offer valuable insights into the subjective preferences that influence our choices and behaviors. Our journey through the world of scaling techniques now takes us to the fascinating realm of semantic differentials. How do we assign meaning to the world around us? What makes a concept like happiness evoke certain feelings and associations? The semantic differential method seeks to answer these questions by exploring the connotative meanings we ascribe to words, concepts, and objects. It's not just about the dictionary definition of a word, but rather the subjective feelings, images, and ideas that the word evokes in our minds. The semantic differential method typically involves presenting individuals with a concept or object, such as happiness, and asking them to rate this concept on a series of bipolar adjective scales. These scales consist of pairs of opposite adjectives, such as happy-sad, exciting-boring, pleasant-unpleasant, or good-bad. The semantic differential method is a powerful tool for understanding how people perceive and evaluate the world around them. Our final stop on our exploration of scaling techniques brings us to the intriguing Q-sort method, a unique approach that offers deeper insights into human attitudes and opinions. Imagine trying to understand an individual's stance on a complex issue like climate change, where opinions can vary widely and are influenced by numerous factors. People's views on climate change are rarely black and white, often encompassing a spectrum of beliefs, values, and concerns that are deeply personal and sometimes conflicting. The Q-sort method provides an elegant solution by allowing individuals to express their views in a more holistic and less restrictive manner than traditional rating scales, capturing the complexity of their thoughts. In a typical Q-sort study, participants are presented with a set of statements or items related to the topic of interest, which they must then evaluate. For instance, a Q-sort study on climate change might include statements such as, climate change is a serious threat to humanity, reflecting a common concern, or human activity is the primary cause of climate change, which addresses the perceived root cause of the issue. Participants are then asked to sort these statements into a predefined distribution, typically a normal distribution, based on their level of agreement or disagreement with each statement, allowing for a detailed analysis. The Q-sort method allows for a nuanced understanding of individual perspectives, providing researchers with a rich data set that reveals the underlying structure of people's attitudes and beliefs. And so, our exploration of scaling techniques in psychology draws to a close. 
We've journeyed through the fascinating realm of measurement, uncovering the ingenious methods that allow us to quantify the seemingly unquantifiable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more insightful content. Until next time, keep exploring the fascinating world of psychology, and remember, the journey of self-discovery is an ongoing adventure.